Shopify is a top stock on the TSX today. It got an upgrade from the Bank of America to buy from neutral. Our guest says it's a quality company, but the shares are still overvalued. We're joined by Mike Van Oker, Portfolio Manager at MV Wealth Partners with IA Private Wealth. Great to see you. Great to be here. So it's a case of a good company, but not a great stock right now. Yeah, well, we're value managers, right? We're not looking necessarily for something that's trading at a very high multiple just because, you know, the growth keeps going. We want to look at something that says to us, well, there's a big margin of safety in terms of valuation, mm -hmm. because if for whatever the reason is, the growth engine stops or even decreases, how's the market going to react? So fabulous company, great platform, great enabler of small and medium sized businesses mm -hmm. uh, for e-commerce and such, but not our cup of tea trading, according to my Bloomberg screen, at about 70 times this year's earnings. Something like that. I mean, again, it's a very big grower, and so maybe mm -hmm. they'll grow into the valuation, but it, it's not there for us just yet. Gosh, it's a big company. Um, 121 billion market cap Canadian dollars. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's not small. And I mean, what a success story. You have to hand it to uh, Mr. Finkelstein, and I believe it's Mr. Lutke. <laughs> Uh, you know, what an enterprise they've built to help Canadians and, in fact, people all over, mm -hmm. uh, you know, build their businesses. But when you look at equity investing, uh, we, we like the, uh, for our equities to fit into a certain box mm -hmm. and, and check mark a few of our uh, parameters. And this one just doesn't yet. Chorus Entertainment, CJR, uh, dot B, of course, would compete with us as uh, CTV. It runs yes. Global TV, among other assets. Um, it seems that there are solvency concerns now. Yeah, you, you could tell by the stock price, uh, by the balance sheet, by the recent layoffs. Um, I'm not sure that this is a going concern. Uh, certainly, they have some very good properties, absolutely. Um, but I think that at this point in time, you're going to need a restructuring of some sort. Uh, and I don't know what the value of the shares to current shareholders is going to be, if anything, uh, above zero. Um, perhaps maybe they can, you know, do a chapter 11 or whatever, a bankruptcy restructuring, uh, reduce debt, reduce liabilities, recapitalize the company, come out the other side. But... Mm -hmm. I'm not sure what the current shareholders are going to get out of that, if anything. Strictly for speculators right now, the stock? Probably. No, probably. Okay. Um, gold, near, actually, it looks like we have got a new record high for gold today. We could get, we're likely for the most active future to get a, a record high close. Are, are, you, are you heavy on gold these days? We're not heavy on gold. Uh, we, we do have a small gold position uh, through ETFs. Okay. Um, you know, gold is a, is, a, is a funny asset. You know, some people believe it's, you know, a replacement for money. Other people believe that it's a reserve, you know, currency. Mm -hmm. Other people just trade it like a commodity. No. Um, it does have some properties of inverse correlation to other classes. And, you know, for so many years, gold has done nothing, and now it's breaking out. Mm -hmm. So from a charting perspective, you have to respect the breakout. Right, but it's not a uh, part, not a big part of your portfolio. Not a big part, yeah. but it, it is a small piece to have mm -hmm. as a token hedge, if you will. What about U.S. bank earnings? Are you seeing a pattern there? Yeah, um, we think that uh, people are underestimating the U.S. banking system. This is not the banking system of pre-2008, where you had 30, 35 times leverage. Uh, these banks, I think, are rock solid, especially the bigger money center banks. I'm talking your Wells Fargo, Citigroup, Bank of America, uh, JP Morgan Chase. Uh, you know, these are stalwarts, and they've worked so hard to make their balance sheets, dare I say, almost bulletproof that even I mean uh, June the 28th I believe the uh, most recent Fed's trust test came out and they were putting in some extremely onerous scenarios and even in an extremely onerous scenario none of the banks would need a recapitalization so that speaks to some big heft in terms of profit margins, capital levels, diversification of their businesses. Um, and if you look at the amount of reserves that the U.S. banking system or the U.S. financial system has sitting at the uh, Fed, it's monstrous. Mm. So we think that 
even if we did have a more than your garden variety slowdown, the U.S. banking stocks are going to make it through, and we think some of them could be extremely cheap right now still. Our favorite is Citigroup. Mm. We were pounding the table at 40, pounding the table at 50. Here we are at 65. It's still trading below its book value. Uh, it's still trading well below its tangible book value. They just increased their dividend. Uh, we're waiting for buybacks to occur. We think that there's going to be a lot of accretion. Had a lot of respect for Jane Fraser and you know the overhaul and the revamp that she's had on this mm -hmm. you know very big organization. Uh, we also own State Street. That was uh, a top pick of ours uh, just a week ago on uh, Market Call. Uh, they reported this morning. Uh, we think it was fabulous. Uh, we like what they were saying. They've got great uh, capital levels. Mm -hmm. uh, they have a dividend bump, which is always nice. Um, so yeah, and, and we are looking at Bank of America that we haven't bought yet. Uh, still doing our work on it. Still trying to see where we think the, the rubber meets the road in terms of valuation and upside.